Hello, BCPS families. We are so excited to share weather with you today. This week, fourth graders have been determining the main idea and key details of informational text. After you finish listening to the story, we will share some questions for you to think and talk about. Then you will see a writing prompt. You can use this writing prompt to respond to the text. You can then share your written response with your teacher. Finally, you will see some project ideas for enrichment and ways to have fun interacting with the book. Enjoy! Today's text is called Weather by Katrona Clark. A special thank you to Scholastic for allowing us to read this book together today. Today we are reading about the weather. While we read today, we are going to be reviewing main idea and key details. Remember, the main idea is what the text is all about. We will be asking ourselves, what does the author want us to learn about this topic? Speaking of topic, we can get a big clue regarding the topic by just looking at our title page. The title is weather and we have a huge thunderstorm happening in the picture. The topic of this text is weather. We need to be thinking, what does the author want us to be learning about the weather? Let's find out. Before we start reading, let's take a look at the table of contents. The table of contents gives us a clue about all the different types of weather we are going to be reading about today. Based on these titles, I can see we are going to be reading about rain, snow, ice, wind, twisters, just to name a few. Each section of our text is going to be about a specific weather topic. I also notice that some of the sections are written as questions. Authors sometimes use this writing technique to clue us, the readers, into the main idea. Let's get started. Rain or shine. The weather can be sunny, rainy, windy, or snowy. Every kind of weather is happening somewhere in the world right now. This is a snowstorm in New York. Here is one of those questions. What is weather? After reading these two pages, I should be able to define weather. What is weather? The weather is caused by three main things, heat, water, and air. The sun gives out heat, which warms the earth. Water makes clouds and rain. It also makes fog, hail, and snow. Air is always moving around. This is what makes the wind blow. The earth is wrapped in a thick, blanket of air called the atmosphere. This is where weather happens. From space, the atmosphere looks like a hazy blue ring around the earth. The white swirls are clouds. If you look at the picture, you can see that hazy blue ring that is the atmosphere. So, what is weather? Well, based on what we read, weather happens in the atmosphere and is caused by three main things, heat, water, and air. Some examples of weather include rain, fog, hail, and snow. Water on the move. Water is always moving between the sea, the air, and the land. This is called the water cycle. The sun warms the water in the sea and turns it into an invisible gas. 2. The gas rises and turns into tiny droplets of water, making clouds. 3. The tiny droplets bump into each other and join together to make bigger drops. When the drops of water become heavy enough, they fall as rain. 5. Rivers carry the rainwater back to the sea. The water cycle begins again. The rain that falls on you may have fallen on a dinosaur millions of years ago. Hmm, what is this section teaching us all about? The water cycle. How is the water cycle connected to weather? 
Why does the author want us to learn about the water cycle? Well, water is directly related to the weather. Rain, snow, sleet, hail are all forms of water that move around the earth. Clouding over. Different types of clouds mean there will be different types of weather. Puffy white cumulus clouds usually mean that good weather is coming. Stratus clouds cover the sky. This means that there might be fog or drizzle. Wispy cirrus clouds high in the sky mean rain or snow may be coming later. A big cumulonimbus cloud means that there may be a thunderstorm. When tiny water droplets form close to the ground, this is called fog or mist. This is the Golden Gate Bridge in California. It is foggy there most of the time. Hmm, what is the main idea of this page? Yep that there are many different types of clouds. What are some details that the author includes to elaborate on this main idea? Well, the author named and described a bunch of clouds, stratus clouds, cumulus clouds, cirrus and cumulonimbus clouds, even fog and mist. Icy crystals. When the air is very cold, the water in clouds freezes to make tiny ice crystals called snowflakes. Most snowflakes have six points. No two snowflakes are ever exactly the same shape. This is what snowflakes look like when they are put under a microscope. Icicles form in snowy weather when the sun shines onto snow on roofs or trees. The snow melts when water drips down into the cold shade where it freezes. More water slowly drips down and freezes forming lots of icy fingers. Electric skies. Thunderstorms happen when a cumulonimbus cloud forms in the sky. Strong winds inside the clouds swirl rain, snow, and hailstones up and down. This makes electricity build up. It escapes down to the ground as flashes of lightning. Lightning sometimes hits trees and buildings on its way from the cloud to the ground. This type of lightning is called forked lightning. Thunder is the sound that lightning makes when it heats up the air around it. You always see lightning before you hear thunder because light travels faster than sound. Great balls of ice. Hail forms inside giant thunderclouds, so you often get hailstorms at the same time as thunder and lightning. Water droplets get blown up to the top of the cloud by gusts of air. Two, the droplets freeze. They drop down and a layer of water forms around them. Three, the hail is blown up to the top of the cloud again and the layer of water freezes. Four, this happens again and again until the hail gets too heavy and falls from the sky. If a hailstone is cut in half, its layers look a bit like those in an onion. This is the biggest hailstone ever. It fell in Nebraska in 2003. It is shown here at just over half its actual size. Wild wind. Wind is moving air. It happens when hot air rises and cold air rushes in to take its place. The strength of the wind is measured on a scale from one to 12. A force two breeze 
dries the clothes on a clothesline. A force five wind blows the leaves from the trees. A force nine wind is a severe gale. It can blow tiles from roofs. A force 12 wind is a hurricane. It can destroy houses. A hurricane begins when hot air rises quickly over the sea and starts to spin. This causes a violent storm with heavy rain. When a hurricane reaches land, huge waves and strong winds batter the coast. The ancient Greeks believed that the wind was the breath of the gods. It's usually pretty easy to determine the main topic, especially looking at the title like we've mentioned, wind. But what does the author want us to know about wind? That's the tougher question. I think the author wants us to know that wind has different strengths and as a result causes different amounts of damage. For example, a force two breeze just dries the clothes, but a force 12 wind can destroy a house. Terrible twisters. Tornadoes are violent whirling winds. They are sometimes called twisters. A tornado is like a giant vacuum cleaner. It sucks things up from the ground. The air inside a thundercloud slowly begins to spin around and around. Two, the air spins faster and faster. The cloud begins to change shape. Three, warm air is sucked up into the cloud. It becomes shaped like a funnel. The cloud touches the ground and as it moves, it destroys everything in its path. Twisters can sometimes suck fish and frogs out of ponds. Weather scientists. Scientists measure the weather and then tell us what they think the weather will be like. Wind speed and rain are measured at weather stations all over the world. Special planes fly into clouds to measure how much water is in them. Satellites in space take pictures of clouds and storms on Earth. Some people think that cows lie down when it is about to rain. Weather balloons are sent high into the sky to measure the air temperature. The scientists put together all this information to make a weather forecast. The white swirling cloud below is a hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean. What is the main idea of this section? There are different ways to measure the weather. What are some details that show or support this main idea? How do we measure the weather? Weather balloons measure air temperature. Satellites take pictures of clouds and storms. What else? Animal magic. Weather doesn't just affect people, it affects the way animals behave too. For example, the fur of a snowshoe hare changes from brown to white for the winter. The hare can't be spotted in the snow by eagles that hunt it. Every year, some birds fly a very long way to escape the cold winter weather. Some animals, like dormice, sleep through the long cold winter. This is called hibernation. When it gets colder, a dormouse eats lots of fruit and seeds. It makes a snug nest underground or in a tree and goes to sleep. Six months later, it wakes up ready for the summer ahead. Hot and cold. Some places have such extreme weather that not many people or animals live there. The Sahara Desert in Africa is one of the hottest and driest places on earth. 
Camels can live here because they can survive without water for a long time. Under the hot sun, desert rocks become so hot that you could fry an egg on them. Antarctica is the coldest place in the world. Penguins are one of the few animals that are able to live there. They huddle close together to keep warm in the winter. Weird weather. In some parts of the world, the weather makes odd things happen. Some people think that strange clouds like this one look like spaceships. It is called a lenticular cloud. They usually form near mountains. Red raindrops sometimes fall from the sky. Winds pick up red sand from African deserts and carry it across the sea. The sand mixes with droplets of water in the clouds to make the red rain. A hailstone with a turtle inside once fell from a thundercloud in Mississippi. Heating up? Many scientists think that the Earth's atmosphere is slowly getting warmer. The air in the atmosphere acts like a blanket to keep the Earth warm. When fuels like oil and coal are burned, lots of gases are released into the air. The atmosphere is getting warmer because the gases trap heat from the sun. Animals add to the gases released into the air. If the earth gets warmer, the weather will change. In cold places, ice and snow would melt and cause massive floods. Hundreds of years from now, all this ice might have melted. Hmm. On this page, the author is talking about how the earth is heating up. But that's not all. She wants, she seems to have an opinion about it. She wants her readers to know that the earth is heating up and it's not necessarily a good thing. One detail to support this main idea is that melting snow and ice will cause massive floods. While you are thinking about main idea this week, make sure you are doing more than just identifying the main topic. If the main topic of your text is weather, make sure you are thinking what about the weather does the author want us, the readers, to know? And what key details do they include that help support this idea? We hope you enjoyed listening to the story. Listen as I read you these questions. Then you will have a few moments to share your answers with someone near you. What is the main idea of the text? What are some key details the author gives that support the main idea? What causes weather? What are some interesting facts about weather you learned from listening to this text?
Grab a piece of paper and a pencil and jot down this idea for writing about the story. Describe one type of weather the author gave information about in this text. Here are some more ways you can interact with the story at home. Choose one type of weather the author gave information about in the text and do more research on that type. Use the digital content tools on BCPS1 to help you with your research. Keep track of the weather. Create a chart to monitor the weather every day for two weeks. Do you notice any patterns? Talk to your family to see if anyone has experienced an extreme weather event, such as a tornado or hurricane. Interview them about their experience. Thanks for joining us for weather. We hope to see you again soon.